Welcome back. This is part three of my home built ventilator videos. As you can see, I have the hardware and software working now. One thing that makes this ventilator project different than others is that this one has a pressure sensor that senses when the patient is trying to inhale and it times the breath cycle with the patient inhaling. And that's different than a lot of the other ventilator projects that are out there that are just running asynchronously based on a timer and they could be forcing air in while the patient's trying to exhale. So this one always stays in sync and I can show you how it does that. The screen turns orange when it's in a wait state waiting for the patient to inhale. And if the patient takes too long or the, the inhale is not sensed, it will force a breath after a few seconds and that's all configurable on the screen. So I'll show you now how the, how the breath sensing works. Uh, the sensation's a bit like breathing through a scuba regulator. I've never used a ventilator before, so uh, it's, it's kind of a new experience for me. So. This is the mechanical portion of the project. I'll obviously have a cradle here to hold the bag in place, but I didn't want to waste the plastic because all the stores are closed at the moment because of the coronavirus. The arms are driven by a timing belt and a stepper motor. I'm using a NEMA 34 stepper with a 3 to 1 belt ratio. I made the timing belt sprocket on my CNC machine. Well, this is how the timing belt sprockets came out. I'm using this angle position sensor. This is from a Land Rover. It's used to measure the ride height on the air suspension. And it's a solid state device that uses a Hall effect. So there's no wiper arm that's going to wear out. This position sensor is what allows the PLC to control the open and closed position of the arms. The arm's quite strong. It's closing with about 25 pounds of force. There's not much I can do to stop them from closing. Just curious to see how fast we can go. This is a bird's eye view of all the controls hardware involved, basically all the inputs, outputs, and sensors. This is the control panel that I built. The incoming power is 24 volts, and coming out of the panel are three cables. This cable goes to the stepper drive, and this tells the motor uh, speed and direction. This cable is for my pressure sensor. This pressure sensor measures 0 to 1.45 PSI. And the third cable is for the arm position sensor. On the right here, I have a function generator. The pulse width modulated output from this function generator goes through the PLC, and that gets sent to the drive amplifier. This is a joystick, which I decided not to use. This is a fault reset button, and it illuminates red if there's a fault. And this is the on-off switch. It can run in either AC mode, which I demonstrated earlier. BC mode just runs in an asynchronous timed mode. This is the PLC, and that's what all these inputs and outputs are connected to. And this is what's controlling the sequence. This is a amplifier, which converts the 0 to 25 millivolt signal from the pressure transducer into a 0 to 10 volt signal that the PLC can read. This is a circuit breaker. This is my on-off switch for killing power to the servo drive. And the PLC communicates with Ethernet to my laptop for programming. This is the PCB I made that has a 0 to 10 volt and 0 to 5 volt output. And underneath I have a 24 volt power supply for running the stepper motor. This is the main screen and this is where you set how many breaths per minute. And if you hold the escape button down for two seconds, it will highlight a cursor and allow you to change the values. Here I'll show you what happens if I increase the breaths per minute. I'll go from 9 to 29. So I have the breathing cycle set to 29 right now. And you can see as soon as the arms open, they pretty much immediately close. 
Let's see what happens if we set the breathing cycle really high. I'll try 59. Now you can see that we're getting a red flash instead of an orange flash. And now we have an alarm pop up every cycle. And that's because the arms are not open all the way before the next cycle starts. So we have to increase the speed of the arms. And this is a really high breathing rate. Tidal volume is how far the arms close. So basically how much air is fed to the patient. So I'll go from 150 down to let's say 120. And you'll see that the arms close less far. But changing the speed on the motor on the other control panel will change the I over E ratio and it'll display what the actual ratio is measured. And the actual PSI is measured here. If I blow into the mask, I can get it to go up. The next screen shows the breath per minute timer counting down. And this is counting down until it forces a breath. Peep start pressure is set by this mechanical peep valve, which is on the exhaust side of the mask. The peep valve maintains a certain residual pressure inside the patient's lungs. And peep drop is how far that pressure will drop when the patient's inhaling to trigger the next cycle. This set point is for timing when to measure plateau pressure after peak pressure is measured. So these are the alarm limits for positive and negative over travel, as well as the open position. This is the alarm limit for max pressure, and I have it set to a really high number right now so I don't get alarms. This is the peak minus plateau delta pressure. So this is the difference between peak pressure and plateau pressure. This is max plateau pressure set point. These are timeouts for if the arm takes a really long time to close, for example, if the sensor fell off or broke, this would cause an alarm to occur after 10 seconds. When the machine's running, this is showing what steps in the sequence the machine's on. So you can see the little asterisks appear next to the steps that are currently running. And the same for AC mode. This is for calibrating the air pressure sensor. These are the raw values for the sensors and terms of voltage. AC and BC are the two switches. This is the joystick, XY, and the push button. And the red button is the, the reset button. This screen is just displaying the, the various pressures that are measured throughout the cycle. So we have live pressure, peak pressure, plateau pressure, peep start pressure. This is a statistics page showing how many cycles the arm has done and how many hours and minutes it's run in BC or AC mode. For any variables that I didn't put on the HMI, they're also accessible without a laptop by exiting the program. And you can see all the variables here that are in the PLC. So it's nice that you can modify any variable without a laptop. I wanted to quickly show how to install the PLC program into the PLC. I just use an SD card and save the file as a .bin. Here's my PLC, and the card goes in upside down from what you would think. When the PLC powers up, the program is automatically loaded from the SD card into the PLC's memory. Panel mount LCD screens are also available with a little bit more space for displaying characters and a couple extra function buttons. This is what the PLC program looks like. I'll give you a quick run through all the pages. At the top left, this is the analog input that's connected to the pressure sensor. It goes through a filter and then a scaling block. At the top right, that's our max pressure alarm limit. And this is the comparator that compares it to the actual pressure and generates an alarm. And the code's the same for all the other pressure limits. If we scroll down, you can see where we're recording the starting peep pressure in a sample and hold function and comparing it to the set point and that's how we know when an inhale was detected. Scrolling down this is how we're measuring the I over E ratio. This is the number of milliseconds the arms are closing divided by the number of milliseconds that the arms are not closing. Scrolling down we have analog input 2 at the top left which is the angle position sensor and we have 
the alarm limits for over travel. We have the stop limits for opening and closing the arms. And if we scroll down, we have the two outputs that go to the stepper drive in the middle on the right side, stepper pulse and stepper direction. And above and below that, we have the timeouts in case the arms don't reach position within a few seconds, an alarm will be generated. Scrolling down to the next page, we have the two inputs for our mode buttons and some logic in there to record the total number of cycles and an hour counter for each mode. The TikTok bit you see is just the pulse train and that's used to update the math instructions. This is the homing sequence and this happens every time you start the machine, whether you're in AC or VC mode, the first thing it will do is home the arms, so it's telling the arms to open. When the arms are open, it goes on to start the normal cycle. This is the logic for running the sys control mode. This is a step sequencer. First thing we do is tell the arms to close. When they're closed, we wait for plateau pressure to be measured. When that completes, we go on to the next step, which is open the arms. We immediately jump to the next step to record peep pressure. And then we immediately jump to the last step, which is waiting for the arms to open and waiting for a breath to be detected or the breath per minute timer expiring. When those conditions are met, the cycle is considered done and it starts over at the top of the screen at step 2A. The sequence for VC mode is pretty much the same as AC mode. Request the arms to close. When the arms are closed, we measure the plateau pressure. When that completes, we tell the arms to open. And on the final step, we're waiting for the arms to be open and the breath per minute timer to expire. If the breath timer has not expired, we turn the LCD amber. You can negate one of the inputs on these Boolean instructions by double clicking. You'll see a little dot there that indicates it's a not. When the cycle's complete, we restart and start the cycle again. This is the alarm screen. These are a list of all the alarms that we have and they latch a flip-flop. And if we press the red button, that will unlatch the flip-flop to reset the alarms. This instruction I have highlighted is a message instruction, and that's how we write information to the screen. In the gray box, you can change the text displayed based on a Boolean value. This red block is what changes the backlight color of the LCD. There's also white and orange. Scrolling down to the last page now, these are the majority of the message instructions that I have in the PLC. So these are all the screens that you scroll through when the machine's running. And just like the alarm screens, you can configure what's displayed. Here I'm displaying an analog input value. On the other lines I'm displaying things like gain or inputs to a math instruction. We can click a button to simulate the PLC running on our computer and we can scroll through all the screens to see what they look like and you'll see the traces in the program in the background turn red if they're true and my screen capture got cut off a little bit on the bottom but you can type in values for all the analog inputs you can flip toggle switches for simulating the inputs the light bulbs across the bottom are showing you the value of some of the boolean memory addresses you can also connect to the PLC using ethernet and see all the values live for troubleshooting I've been getting a lot of questions about why I chose a PLC instead of an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi. And for me, a PLC is more of a rugged device. It mounts on a DIN rail, has screw terminals that can take, you know, heavy gauge wire. The inputs are isolated. The outputs are rated 10 amps, where an Arduino is more of a circuit board based controller, where the inputs are five volt TTL. Um, it doesn't have a built in screen. And you can add a screen, but it's pretty tedious moving the cursor for every position when you want to write a variable. And I have about 20 screens, so programming that in an Arduino would be really tedious. A lot of the inputs are 10 volt or 24 volt inputs. And using an Arduino with a 5 volt input, I'd have to regulate the voltage for each one. You have to assemble a bunch of circuit boards where this is just something quick and easy. Clips on a DIN rail. There's a programming software for it that makes it easy to program. Listing all the variables and set points and being able to change them on the screen is really, uh, it's just a built-in function where Arduino, you have to program kind of that low level logic 
I like being one level above that kind of low level programming. The software environment for programming PLCs is really user friendly. There's a lot of drag and drop tools uh, for doing math instructions, for displaying variables on the screen, for example. And that just saves a lot of time. The PLC was about $130 versus an Arduino, which is about $40, $45. Uh, so it's a little bit more expensive. And an Arduino is better suited for controlling a stepper motor since they have a stepper shield for controlling steppers. I'm using relay outputs, which are also not suited for high cycle life, but they also sell uh, extension cards so I can get an analog output or a solid state output from the PLC. But this is more of a proof of concept and uh, just trying to get the PLC program to work. And if needed, I can always upgrade by adding those cards later. Well, thank you for watching if you made it this far. If you're building one of these at home, feel free to download my PLC code and drawings off my website. The link is in the description below. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.